Good morning. If you're worshiping with us this morning on this beautiful Lord's Day. If you're visiting with us, please fill out the welcome sheet that can be found in your pew and drop it in the offering plate to give it to an usher as you leave. Be sure to take your announcement sheet home to be... I'm sorry. What? on. You leave today or online through the end of the day. Si sizes range from youth small to 5X. Be sure to get your apparel today. Orders will be available for pickup on Sunday the 22nd. Today at 1130 will be freezer prep day as part of God's work our hands. Join us in the kitchen as we prepare meals for our outreach ministry and bring a friend. Also today will be a joint youth event between Zion, Good Shepherd, and St. John's Lutheran. Meet at 230 and we'll travel to the back 40 B corn maze outside of Pierpont. Once the maze is complete, we'll travel back to Zion for a soup, supper, and dessert. Cost is $5, and this event is open to youth in grades 6 through 12. Bring a friend. The Faith Formation Committee will once again be hosting Trunk or Treat the last Sunday of October. They're looking for donations of candy, cookies, bars, and vehicle hosts for the event. For all the details, please see your announcements. You can sign up to bring items on the table in the following hall, in the fellowship hall in front of the Sunday School Bulletin Board. We would like to draw to your attention our updated prayer concerns. We received word that Myron Wall passed away on Thursday this past week. His celebration of life will be Monday, October 9th here at Zion. Please keep Myron's family and friends in your prayers this coming week as they grieve your loss. Grieve his loss. And with that, we begin worship today with our gathering hymn, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word, number 570. Please stand as we wow. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. 
for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us for the ways we turn away from you and your neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue with a canticle of praise. Let us pray together. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This time, I would like to invite the children forward, and as they come up, we will sing, Jesus Loves Me. <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. Good. Are you guys excited? It's October. Hey, what? You did. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a Halloween month this month, isn't it? All right, so I have something in this box. It is Legos, Legos. I like Legos too, and you know what? If you put them together, they make a flower. So there's some green pieces, and there's some white pieces, and some yellow and brown pieces. You put them... And if you put them all together, you can make a flower. Do you believe me? 
think that I can put this together and it'll make a flower? You do? No? Yes? I yes? Oh, did? Yeah. I don't have Legos to make a bee. I have Legos to make a flower, though. So we have to take the green pieces and make the stem, and then there's some flowers that we have to put on there, and then there's the white pieces, which are the petals, and then there's a yellow piece that goes in the middle. Do you think that it would be easier if I just kind of showed you how it goes together? Yeah? Should we look at it? So there's these pieces, green pieces, that we put together. And when we put them all together, it makes the stem. And then once we have this longer pieces, we put the little flowers on there. It's going to look pretty cool, isn't it? And then if we put the top on, oh, we need this. So then we've got this part, and then we're getting to put on the top. This is the middle of the flower. And then there's all these little white pieces. Thank you. All right. What kind of flower is this? Dandelion. Oh, you guys are so close, Stacy. Dandelion. Mm, dandelions are, well, they can be white once they get all past that point. This is actually a rose. It just hasn't opened up yet. It has two reds. There's lots of different colors of roses other than red, right? So it was a lot easier for me to show you how to do it, right? There's still part of the stem. Okay, I'm going to put the lid on. Maybe when we're all done. All right, so our gospel lesson today and our faith is kind of like that. It's a lot easier to show people and live out our faith and show love to other people than it is just to talk about it. And in our gospel lesson today, that's what Jesus was teaching them. There were these people called the Pharisees who were leaders of the church and they were trying to trick Jesus. And he asked, who gives you the authority to be teaching in the church? And Jesus said, well, I'll answer that you have to answer a question for me first. And they talked about, he asked them about John the Baptist. And then he told them a story. And he said there, that there were two sons and their father asked them to go work in the vineyard. And one of them said, I will, but guess what? He didn't go. And then the other son said, no, I don't want to do that. But he went anyways. And so Jesus said, who was the most faithful? And they said, the one who actually did the work. And you know what? That's kind of like our faith. It's a, and that's what he told the Pharisees, that you can't just tell them about Jesus, and you can't just tell them about what they need to learn. You need to show them what they need to learn, and that you need to show them to love other people, and you need to show them how to care. And he was also teaching them that Jesus was here to help us, and he was here to share God's love and grace with others. And we can do that too by sharing God's love and grace with others too. And that is our good news for today. Can we say a word of praise and thanks to God? Can we say a prayer? Do you boys remember your prayer positions? Can we say a prayer? We fold our hands. Dear God, thank you for sending your son. He is truly who he says he is. Help us to be genuine in our actions and live out our love with one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. You can head back to your seats. We continue with our readings. The first reading is from the book of Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. 
as I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine, the life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 25. Please read responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I try your trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord, good and right is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the second chapter. <coughs> if then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, 
taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Jesus continues, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, The tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Thank you for having me back. Anybody who hasn't been here when I've been here before, I'm Melissa Zastro. I live in Redfield. I lived in Aberdeen for quite some time and was a teacher and did a couple other jobs, and I'm now back to teaching in Redfield, but it's always nice to come up here. Jonah Moses Peter. As I was sitting in church last Sunday, listening to the Old Testament reading about Jonah being upset with God for saving the people of Nineveh, I made the connection of these three famous men of the Bible and today's gospel, which I had already been pondering. Let's set the stage for today's reading. The passage takes place during what we would now consider Holy Week. Jesus has become quite well known in Jerusalem, and the Jewish leaders are not his biggest fans. Their goal at this point is to find something they can use against Jesus so they can get him to quit doing all the things he's been up to. The main thing they don't appreciate is that he has been preaching the gospel, which is not at all favorable to them keeping their power and status. They need to trip Jesus up so he can be put on trial. So they ask about his authority. By whose authority are you doing these things, they ask. These things can be found earlier in Matthew. Jesus has been getting praised by the crowds of people as if he is a king. He chased the money changers out of the temple, and he has been healing the lame and the blind. 
Jesus was doing these things without any human authority. He was not a priest or a Pharisee or a scribe. The leaders ask him then, by what authority are you doing these things? Now, if we really want to give the Jewish religious leaders the benefit of the doubt, we could say, okay, that is a decent question to ask. We expect our religious leaders to get schooling at seminary, become ordained by our bishop or representative, and have continuing education. In the ELCA, we need permission to preside over the sacraments of communion and baptism. Making sure the people leading our faith know what they are doing seems fairly responsible. Unfortunately, the priests were not asking Jesus this question to be protective of their flock. They were looking for Jesus to answer in a way that violated their religious rules so they could get rid of him. Harsh but true. Jesus answers in such a way as to put the questioners on the defensive when he asks about John's baptism. John the Baptist had become very well-liked by the people as a prophet, but the religious leaders had refused to believe in him. If they answer that John's baptism and authority came from heaven, they should have believed John and all that he said about Jesus being the coming Messiah. If they answered that they didn't believe John, they feared the crowds would turn on them. They were in a no-win situation and simply replied that they didn't know. Likewise, Jesus refused to answer, but then tells multiple parables. We hear the parable about the two sons in the second part of today's gospel. In this parable, Jesus tells about the two sons, one who responds negatively to his father's request, but follows through in the end, and one who says he'll do as he asked, but then does not do it. Often, parables are hard to follow, but we got one today that is really quite clear. For all their failings, even the Pharisees got the answer right when Jesus asked them who did the will of the Father. Unfortunately for them, Jesus also points out that they, the Pharisees, are behaving like the second son. They, will, they say they will do what God wants and probably even think they are, but they aren't. They are challenging and thwarting Jesus every chance they get. They heard John's call for repentance, but refused to repent or even consider their need to do so. They are much more concerned with their power than they are with listening to God. I'm sure Jesus' response was more awful than anything they could have imagined. Tax collectors and prostitutes entering the kingdom of heaven before them? Those two groups of people were the worst of the worst in terms of religious favor in Jesus' time. You couldn't compare the Pharisees to anyone less favorably than those two groups of people. So what does this all mean for us today? Are we Pharisees? Are we more like the tax collectors? Anyone else want to claim that neither, neither one? Or is that just me? What is important, what we do or what we say? I'd have to argue that both are important to some extent. Jesus tells us in John 3 to be baptized and believe, and in Matthew 28 to go and make disciples of all nations. I'd say there is a lot of talking involved in those directions. We are to verbally share our beliefs. In confirmation a couple of weeks ago, we watched the Martin Luther movie. In the early days of the Reformation, expressing your faith was almost all about what you said. Though he was very thoughtful in what he said, Luther caused a lot of strife and drama with his words. At one point in his life, he was called before the Diet of Worms, which is like a trial, to recant or take back his criticisms of the Catholic Church. He had posted his 95 theses and had also written other works sharing what he believed were abuses of the Catholic Church. He had already been excommunicated and was likely on the verge of being killed. In the movie, though maybe not so clearly in real life, he was coached to simply say, I recant. He appeared to struggle as he decided whether or not to do so. To recant would, at the very least, save his life. He attempted to evade the questions for a bit, but was finally cornered and had to give a direct answer. He responded with words that have now become very famous. He said, My conscience is captive to the word of God, the Bible. Thus, I cannot and will not recant, because acting against one's conscience is neither safe nor sound. Here I stand, I can do no other. God help me. Luther was exceptionally strong in his convictions, stood up for his beliefs, and was willing to literally die for them. Thankfully, we are usually not in such hot water that for many it would be fairly safe to say, yes, I go to church, 
For yes, I believe in God. We recite the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed most weeks in church, which gives us a format to sharing what we believe if we are called on to do so. Clearly, though, that isn't enough. If all we had to do was talk, the Pharisees would have been in great shape. They knew all the laws and could correct people and talk about their righteousness all day long. Their actions, however, did not match their words. It is ultimately what we do that shows our commitment to our faith. God wants our repentance and our behaviors to show what we believe. Doing what God wants us to do is key. Always easy? Of course not. That is the joy of forgiveness. God doesn't expect us to get it right in just one try. We can try again and again to do God's will. We need to remember that it isn't just the doing, though, that is important. We aren't saved because of our good works. If it were that way, we'd all be out of luck, as we can't work our way out of our sin. Our works do, though, show what we believe. Because I have been saved, I am called to God's mission, to pray, to study God's word, to take care of God's creation, and to share God's love with others. Seems like that would be easy for some of those we look to as leaders in the faith, Bible heroes, so to speak. Maybe not so much if we look a little deeper, though. I found a quote in one of my readings on sermonwriter.com while researching that I will share with you. Hesitant faithfulness trumps unfaithfulness. I love it. I feel like it could be a bumper sticker of a church if churches were cars. Remember those three I mentioned at the beginning of the sermon? Jonah, Moses, Peter? I think we could call them all a tad more than hesitant. Number one, Jonah. In the first chapter of the book of Jonah, God tells him to go to Nineveh. Jonah most certainly does not. He flees to the city of Joppa, finds a ship headed to Tarshish, pays, gets on board, and sails away. Eventually, Jonah finds his way and does what God asks him to do. Number two, Moses. In the early chapters of the book of Exodus, God is trying to get Moses to talk to Pharaoh about freeing the Israelites who have been slaves in Egypt. Moses does everything he can to get out of this task. If you get into your Bible, you can read over an entire chapter of Exodus where Moses argues with God about how he doesn't have the skills needed to do what God wants him to do. Once again, we know that Moses eventually listens to the call and becomes a great leader of the Israelites. And three, Peter. Oh, Peter. Peter, who Jesus said would be the rock on which the church would be built. Yes, the same Peter who hesitates at perhaps the worst possible moment and denied knowing Jesus three times. Even this action, which happened as Jesus was headed toward death on the cross, was later forgiven by Jesus. If these people, chosen by God to do his work, hesitated, can we not also feel a little better about our failings? As their sins are forgiven, we remember that ours are also. This is our good news. Nothing we do is unforgivable. Jesus spent much more time hanging out with people like the tax collectors than he did with the Pharisees. Jesus uses those of us who are considered the worst sinners as examples of who will enter the kingdom of heaven before those who appear to be headed to the front of the line. Can you think of a person, a type of a person, or a category who you think is unforgivable? Maybe those who have committed some terrible crime, maybe someone who's committed war crimes, or they have a different opinion on a moral issue than you. Anyone? Jesus couldn't. No one, no sin is unforgivable in Jesus' eyes. Jesus says those people, those people you might have thought of, will head straight to heaven if they repent and turn from their ways. We all have to at some point, actually at many points, over and over, repent and turn away from our sin. That was the problem the Pharisees had. They refused to see that they were sinning. But alas, the Pharisees are not left in the dust. They also can repent. Just because they hadn't repented yet doesn't mean they still couldn't. Maybe some days we are the tax collectors, and other days we are the Pharisees in the story. Either way, we still have hope. Whether we are the first son or the second son, God loves us and wants us to do his will. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for calling us to your service. Your son was the perfect model of how to live. Though we know we can never live up to his example, we will continue to try. 
We will try to be the second son when he says yes right away to your command. And we will also try to be the first son who actually does what you want. We will try, but we know we will fail. We thank you for sending Jesus as a gift to us and for your forgiveness. We will head into this week ready to believe and to do as we think you would want us to do. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, When Peace Like a River, number 785. Please stand on the last verse. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact the environment. Summon us to be advocates for healthy waterways, habitats, and air. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lead us in justice as we pray for those in government, the military, and other positions of authority. Give them humble and willing hearts, looking to the needs of others. We pray also for our enemies, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way, especially Joyce, Bob, Lyle, Della, Meta, Sharon, Leonard, Jerry, Connie, Duane, Ken, Esther, Mildred, Barb, and the family of Myron Walsh. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Teach us your paths as we pray for this congregation. Be at work in us and unite us in your love as we labor together for the sake of the gospel. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these in the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may share the sign of peace. In joy and peace, we are given through the cross of Jesus Christ. Please consider your gifts to Zion that will strengthen your ministry and mission together for the sake of all in need of hearing of Christ's love and grace for them. You can give online, in the mail, or in person here today. Children are invited to come forward and place their offerings in the For Children Everywhere box at the front of the sanctuary. Thank you for your gracious gifts to Zion and for your partnership in the gospel of Christ. Our offering hymn is number 748, O God in Heaven. <laughs> Let us pray together. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table, 
that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Each of us is broken by sin and less than God has created us to be. But this does not disqualify us from being touched by God and serving God in any capacity, large or small, broken as we are. God uses broken things. It takes broken clouds to give rain, broken ground to give grain, broken grain to give bread, broken bread to give strength. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray in confidence the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live. Please be seated. Here at Zion, we practice open communion, which means that all who believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is truly present in the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper are welcome to gather at the Lord's table. We have gluten-free wafers and grape juice available. If children are not communing today, they are welcome to come forward with their hands folded for a blessing.
Please stand. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you unto eternal life. Let us pray together. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now receive the benediction. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. We conclude with our sending hymn, The Lord Now Sends Us Forth, 538. We will sing this straight through twice. Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks be to God.